Melissa Hayton, welcome to Eden. Uh, this is your first visit here. What are your impressions of the conference? Um, it's lovely to be invited to Eden. I haven't been here before. As you say, I found it to be a very interesting conference. Everybody's very friendly and there's so many papers, so many people presenting. I think it is the place to be if you're interested in reimagining how we do online learning. And, and to reimagine education, to reimagine learning, uh, th there are lots of possibilities there, aren't they? But um, someone said this morning that the learner has to be central to that. Is that your um, approach too? Um, I, well, I suppose so. Um, the learning is done by the learner, but their learning is facilitated through contact with us and with our materials and as part of our organisations. So I think that the people who really need to be doing the reimagining um, are the um, institutions and thinking about how we can adjust our businesses to make sure that our materials can be used in the most flexible possible way for those learners and by those learners. But not just by our immediate learners, also by each other and by other teachers. So certainly in the institution that I work for, I'm very aware that when we talk about openness um, and sharing, we're speaking from a position of privilege in that I work in a very good university, a very old university, with excellent academic staff, um, beautiful collections, amazing, amazing researchers. So when we talk about openness and equality, it's very important to, for us to think about what we're doing and as a knowledge creation organization and think about how we can address our privileged position by sharing materials that can then be reused by other teachers in their teaching. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we're going to talk a bit about op uh, open licensing, mm -hmm. but often people can confuse the fact that individual learners can use the material if we make it available to them. Whether our material can be reused by other teachers in their work really requires that extra effort from us to think about the sharing licenses for reuse rather than just the publishing mm -hmm. and putting mm -hmm. licenses. So Edinburgh, where you, where you work, is, is, is very uh, advanced in this area. You, you've made some uh, incredible strides in, in terms of openness and, and opening up content. Um, but one thing you said this morning, I think, struck a lot of us, and it was, I'll, I'll try and quote you. It was about um, making, um, if you don't make open, uh, sorry, if you are not open, you are at risk and it costs money. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, um, Edinburgh is a very distinctive institution in that it's, it was founded as a civic university for the common good, and it's a publicly funded university. So part of what we need to do is to make sure that our materials are available openly and shared for the greater good for society within Edinburgh, within Scotland, um, and beyond. We have quite a lot of material now. We have many MOOCs a lot of OER, we have a lot of distance learning courses. Mm -hmm. So we're really talking about scale. And as soon as you talk about scale, you're talking about systems and processes. We're using lots of different platforms, we're using repositories, we've got a lot of content. Those online master's courses include a lot of content. So when we think about investing for open educational resources. If the content that we're producing right now doesn't have a license associated with it, which means that it can be reused in the future by the university, um, by each other uh, in different ways um, for this teaching and then this teaching um, on this course and then this course. So reusing material within the institution and knowing its license and who created it and when. It's very important um, as part of the metadata at scale. Mm. So your, my point about um, being open is a, not being open is a risk and not being open will cost us money is that anything that we create now, if we have to go back to that in the future mm. and do the work of checking the um, licenses on the material, that takes time and money. And colleagues always say, oh well, I'll, I'll make my material 
available online now. And when we go back to them a couple of years later and say, we're moving this material from this repository to this repository, do you have the copyright for all this material? And they say, oh no, I can't really remember where that came from. They say, oh, well, we can't move it if it doesn't have um, the license on it. They say, isn't there someone who can check that for me? And so that expense of, having, of bringing in somebody later to check the copyright so that we can reuse the material. Often the original creator has left or it wasn't clear. Um, and so we can't use the material ourselves. So the risk to the institution of having material that we don't have a clear license on means that we can't then use it in the future. So checking the license now means that we won't have to pay the additional cost in the future. So better so to work it out up front rather than later on. Yes. Uh, it's a legacy yes. problem otherwise. So, so not so, yeah. being open is a risk to our future mm. business mm. and it will cost us money because we will end up having to go back and change and check all of that material. I wonder, I wonder how many other universities have actually seen that. I, I, th I, I suspect not so many but uh, we'll see in the future whether that actually comes back. One of the things that particularly interested me about your keynote was that you mentioned that you have a Wikimedian in residence at the university. Can you tell us what that entails? Yes, yeah, so the, the Wikimedian in residence scheme is a, um, it's like an artist in residence or a writer in residence. Um, we work very closely with Wikimedia UK. Um, there have been uh, Wikimedians resident in museums and libraries before, but University of Edinburgh is the first one in the UK for the university to have the Wikimedian as part of their, um, well, part of our digital skills area. So this is a very important commitment, I think, to the skills and understanding around participating in an open knowledge culture, um, what we contribute, um, how we can contribute to it, but also an understanding as to who creates information, how does it get onto Wikipedia, how, how does it stay there, what choices are made, what content is openly licensed enough for Wikipedia. So we have a Wikimedian in residence, he's currently with us for a year, and he's doing amazing activities, um, running sessions where, um, I don't know if you've ever been to a Wikipedia editathon. You get a lot of people in a room together and together with each other and with the librarians and with content experts, we just spend all day improving the quality of the content around a topic. And by the end of the day, the Wikipedia content on that topic is much better than it was before. Well, that, that's an amazing idea, which, which is so simple yet, and yet so powerful. And, and I, I'm sure people watching this video will, will be rushing to their, their heads of department now and say, can we have one as well? I hope so, because I think it's a fabulous idea. Melissa, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you.